St Evan procedure. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the um, meeting of the Planning and Highways Committee this afternoon. Um, we have a number of items on the agenda for consideration. I will hand over to Abby for the welcome and the housekeeping arrangements. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to help keep everyone safe, uh, please maintain social distancing at all times. Please wear a face covering at all times within the venue unless you have an exemption. It can be removed once seated, but you may wish to leave it on. Hand sanitizer will be available for you to use. Please remain seated as much as possible during the meeting and do not congregate around exits and entrances. And follow any signage which is provided, such as one-way systems, to help keep you safe. If you have any concerns or, or are unsure, please ask a member of staff. In the event of the fire alarm sounding, please take instruction from staff and stewards as the assembly point is to the square. Please can I request everyone to switch mobile, de mobile devices to silent mode so as not to disturb the contact, conduct of the meeting. The meeting today will be webcast and the recording will also be available for people to view later through the council's website. While ever the meeting is open to the public, photography, video and sound recording of the proceedings is permitted. However, the chair has discretion to withdraw or suspend this permission, for example, if the recording is disrupting the conduct of the meeting or is being undertaken in a manner which could capture personal information or in the event that a member of the public participating in a meeting objects to being recorded. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Abby. Uh, now, for the benefit of anyone dining in online who wants to know what's happening, there are a number of um, officers on the top two tables and they are supporting the management and running of this committee and we'll be making um, presentations and answering questions later. And on the desks in the floor of the council chamber are the members who comprise this committee. I'm going to go around the room and let the members introduce themselves and say who they are. I'll start with you, Chris. Uh, Councillor Chris Rosalind Joseph, Baton Councillor. And Brian? Uh, Councillor Brian Holmshaw, Broomhill and Sharon Vale. And Peter? Councillor Peter Garber, Netheredge and Sharon Wood. Okay. And the other Peter? <laughs> Councillor Peter Price, member for Brightside, Shea Green. Uh, Tony Dam, Councillor for Southey. If we can go across to Barbara, please. Councillor Barbara Masters, Councillor for Ecclesall. Andy? Uh, Councillor Andrew Sanger, Councillor for Forward Ward. Roger Davison, Councillor for Ecclesall Ward. Yeah, R Richard Williams, uh, Stannington Ward. Bob? Bob. Councillor Bob McCann, uh, Member for Bayton Ward. And last but not least, Gary. Good afternoon all. Councillor Gary Weatherall, Shire Green and Brightside Board. Thank you very much. Um, do, we have any, do we have any apologies for absence, Abby? Thank you, Chair. Yes, we've got apologies for absence from Councillor Zahira Naz and also from Councillor Alan Woodcock and he's sent Councillor Barbara Masters as his sub. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is items which would exclude the public and press. I don't believe we have any items, no. Uh, does any member have any declaration of interest to make? Councillor Masters. Just um, a joint owner of a property within about a mile of um, the uh, daisy chain application in Montague Bridge. Got no interest in it. You know, it doesn't affect my property at all. But I think I should sort of declare that I've got a place in the village. I asked yesterday. <laughs> so I, I'm not too sure whether I should say anything else about that. It's what what implications does that have? What have they? Well, only that when I asked yesterday, should I declare it because um, we rent it out? Whether I should actually mention it, and I was advised to mention it simply because it's not my um, my main residence that's all so i'm mentioning it just to be clear sorry can i just clarify you do you, you own yeah property? i'm joint owner of a property in the bridge village in the village in the village yes but not the subject no not at all nothing to do with it 
the trauma wear off. It's just for clarity. Yeah, okay. Um, but I think that's fine as long as you're. Yeah. And Richard. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been advised that I should declare an interest, uh, personal interest, regarding application for Daisy Chain Littlewood, as I received uh, individual email from somebody representing a number of residents. What I would say is I've read it, I haven't commented on it, and I would like to participate in the, within the discussion. I think that's good advice. I just pass those emails on to officers for attention. Um, Paul, sure that's okay in case I, if that's all the ones I can allow it to affect the discussion. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm declaring an interest in item 7A, the JA Home Starlight. Uh, it's in my ward. I have received emails. I haven't opened the emails. I haven't com communicated with anybody about it. So I think I'm probably okay to uh, participate. Tony. Uh, I think along with everybody else, I've received an email about the daily chain. Uh, I never replied to the emails, but I haven't passed any comment and haven't made my mind up. Okay, thank you for that, everyone. Um, I will move on now to the minutes of the previous meeting that are contained within your agenda pack between pages 9 and 14. Um, can someone move those as a, an accurate? Thank you, Gary, and sec, thank you. Um, I'll go through them page by page for comment. Um, page 9, page 10. Page 11, page 12, and finally page 13. Thank you. Site visits, members will have the uh, Monday before the next full planning meeting held aside in their diary for any site visit should they be so required and officers will be in contact with um, the meeting time and place if any site visits are recommended. Um, we have three applications for consideration today under um, various acts and regulations. The first one is application number 21 stroke 02186 FUL JA Home Starlight and the location is 335 to 337 Abbeydale Road, Sheffield S7. And this is a full planning application for change from retail use to a pub and drinking establishment. I'm going to pass over to the officer now um, for the report on this, on this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, if Jay could just move the slides along, please, to um, the the first plan. That's the one there, thank you. Uh, so that, that shows the location of the site. It's at the junction of Abbeydale Road and Hale Street, which you can see there is a, is a cul-de-sac. Um, if we can move to the next one, please. Uh, that's an aerial photograph uh, showing uh, the position of the site, again, with a little bit more context. Um, and I'll explain more about that shortly. So the, the unit is currently, a, it's a double size unit, um, a ground floor uh, retail uh, use formerly, um, selling bedroom furniture, uh, kitchens and, and the like, um, which is, is vacant and it's been vacant for a short period now. Uh, and it's in the Abbeydale local shopping, Abbeydale Road local uh, shopping centre where there's a wide variety of uh, uses along the ground floor within the centre um, of retail, um, food and drink, uh, business uses. Uh, the proposal is to change the use of the property from the, the previous retail use uh, to a, a pub drinking establishment um, with some external seating on the front. I'll show you the location of that in a moment. Um, and with, a, with an external canopy uh, to, to provide shelter 
uh, alterations to the buildings, um, which I'll, again I'll describe uh, shortly, uh, and uh, a flu at the rear because the the pub intends to or wants flexibility at least to uh, to provide a food offer as well. Um, so, if we can just go through the slides, and I'll, I'll kind of talk talk through them. So, the the first image uh, shows the the front of the property, and you can see um, some sort of a boards uh, along, across the frontage there. That denotes the extent of the frontage of the property, and then beyond that is the public footpath. Uh, the next slide um, is that's Hale Street. So that's looking uh, down Hale Street from the bottom back towards Aberdale Road. Um, if you note the trees on the right, they serve a, a public car park, uh, a reasonably well used public car park, uh, which is at the rear of the property. Residential properties on the, mainly on the other side of Hale Street, but also uh, just to the right of that image there, um, after the, it, with the car parks in between the residential accommodation and the uh, and the application site, the next image uh, is a is, is looking the other way down Hale Street, but with the property in front. And what's worth noting there is uh, the upper floor of that property has been um, boarded, um, windows blocked up, uh, in order to. Uh, sort of facilitate advertising as much as anything else. Um, part of the proposal is to is to take all that off, reinstate window openings, traditional window openings, um, along with other alterations to the shop front. And the next image, uh, that's a, a different shot of that uh, of that front. You can see the extent of advertising, what have you up there. The uh, just a, uh, another image showing the, a close-up of the uh, of the shop front that will be replaced. There will be uh, uh, essentially folding doors, bifold doors along the frontage for connection between the the, the terrace and, uh, uh, and and the pub inside. Um, the next image is a slightly close-up view of the of the top half of the building, which is says to be replaced with uh, traditional window openings, which you'll see on the plan shortly. Um, that's a, a closer view of the side elevation, and again, there's a proliferation of adverts there that, that would be removed, and again, a window going in that, in that, in that location, uh, serving the upstairs, uh, which is to port, form a, a small function room for the facility. That's an image taken from the car park, um, we're, uh, looking towards the back of the property, and that's, broadly speaking, where the flu would be. Uh, the flu would be located um, almost where that, that small tree is uh, behind, behind the van there. That's roughly the position of the flu. So um, probably the, um, the least sensitive part of the site. Uh, so the, the plans, um, unfortunately they're not very large scale I'm afraid, but so the, le the left hand four images there are existing elevations and the right hand are the proposed. And you can just see the extent of the canopy uh, on there, it's intended to be a lightweight structure with poles uh, within the centre of the um, of the forecourt, not at the outer edge, and then a glazed uh, a glazed top. We we you'll note that there's a condition where we request more detail of that because we've had it at a fairly basic level within the application. Um, and the final plan um, shows the. It's a little bit difficult to read again, I'm sorry, because of the scale. But uh, again, left-hand images are existing, right-hand images are proposed. Um, and you can hopefully pick out that on the bottom of the right-hand image is the extent of the terrace. So the right-hand side of the right-hand, bottom right-hand image shows the extent of the terrace. And you can see that along the top of that, it's essentially just an access um, to the property. So the side, the seating won't occur on Hale Street. It will all be concentrated on um, on the Aberdale Road frontage. So, just uh, quickly, Chair, just to run through um, perhaps some of the key issues and points to mention. Um, if I can refer members to supplementary report item three, uh, I'm afraid this will be a theme 
uh, throughout the day, uh, the MPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, was uh, updated. Um, I think the exact date was the 20th uh, of July. So obviously between uh, drafting these reports and, uh, and being here today. So and that's resulted in a number of changes, uh, particularly to the paragraph numbering within the, within the MPPF. And clearly within our reports, we refer to uh, paragraph numbers. Um, so as a result of this, in this particular case, there are six paragraph numbers that have changed. We've listed them there, I won't go through them all. Um, they're there for reference really rather than, than anything else. Uh, the wording of the reports, uh, of the paragraphs, uh, didn't change at all. So there's no need to draw members' attention to any shift in policy there. It's just the, um, just the numbering of, of those sections. We've also received one additional representation since drafting the report, um, which uh, they're listed there, but there aren't many, so I'll refer to them. Uh, concern about people congregating litter, graffiti, and antisocial behaviour, behavior, and a concern that the area doesn't need another public house. Um, and they say that the report says a bar would maintain vitality and valuability of the shopping area. They don't agree with that. Uh, they don't think it would benefit the day traders on Aberdale Road and that the only people benefiting, benefiting would be the owners of the pub themselves and that a retail space would be a better or a cafe would be a better offer. Um, just very quickly, Chair, uh, we've had 36 representations in total. There's one letter of support, uh, 35 object. The reasons are set out in the report on pages 21 to 22. Um, it's within the local shopping area. In policy terms, while our UDP policy seeks to retain a dominance of retail within uh, shopping areas and a dominance being 50% or more, uh, currently, or the most recent evidence is 2019, and that suggests around 62%. So there's still a good proportion of retail within the centre. That said, there's also been a recent change to the use classes order that means that we can give less weight to that now because the, there is much more freedom to move from retail to other uses. So our ability to control that, even if that were desired, um, has been diminished significantly by recent government changes to the use classes order. Uh, so there's no basis, we don't feel, for resisting the proposal on policy grounds at all, uh, on, land use policy on land use policy grounds. Um, in visual impact terms, for the reasons I've explained, we think that this will be a quite a significant improvement to the appearance of the property, um, subject to a good quality canopy on the frontage. Um, and that really leaves neighbour impacts and traffic concerns. Uh, traffic concerns we don't believe are, are significant here. It's a very accessible location. Um, there's, a, there's a car park, if needed, at the rear, uh, along with some uh, on-street parking. Uh, if space allows, but it's an extremely sustainable location. Um, neighbour impacts essentially are, are, are down to noise, as we've mentioned, and, and disturbance that comes with that, as we've mentioned within the report. Um, the nearest residents are uh, actually that image is it's useful enough, I think. Uh, it's the above that uh, property with the red fascia, there is a flat. Uh, as there are amongst, dotted around other units along Aberdale Road. Um, and Hale Street obviously uh, contains predominantly res residential units. We therefore feel that a commercial use in this location on a, on a busy street like this can be accepted, um, but that hours restrictions are appropriate. So we've suggested, uh, as is the norm up and down Aberdale Road for recent planning approvals, we've suggested half 11, uh, for most days, apart from Sundays and bank holidays, um, as a closing time, where we say 11, and then 9 p.m. for a, a ceasing of the use of the external areas uh, and, and the doors being open um, to avoid uh, noise penetration there. And we've also recommended a condition uh, for sound attenuation between the two uses that abut each other. And that was it, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Abby, I don't believe that we have any speakers. No. So I'll open it up to members' questions. Councillor Davison. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I did go and view this yesterday along with Councillor 
uh, and masters. And uh, I agree with uh, what is said in here with, in terms of the conditions. Um, there are a couple of things. One, there is access for dis uh, disability access at the front. That will be maintained, presumably, will it? Uh, yes, yes, it will, Chair, and that's um, in, in part the purpose of the of the ramp that goes down uh, Hale Street. That's that's why that's there. It's set at the appropriate gradient uh, to achieve disabled access into the into the property. Um, the other thing is the the car park at the back, uh, which is uh, fine, and uh, but there are two um, electric pumps there for uh, for electric cars. Uh, and they were occupied, those particular spots. I don't know if it's under our, uh, we could put any conditions uh, in terms of um, not parking, uh, occupying those two slots. Uh, I, I don't think we could do that, Chair, because the, the, it's outside the application site um, as, as the first point. Uh, and secondly, it's, it's a car park management issue. I don't know how that's policed. It, it's not a planning matter. It's something perhaps for parking services, I think. Councillor Hungshire. I, uh, I just wanted to pick up on something that the officer said, which was uh, about a dominance being more than 50% of the area. I would say that would be a majority, not a dominance. And uh, I wondered if he wanted to clarify that. Chris, would you like to come in here? Uh, Chair, the 50% is, is, is taken from the, uh, the UDP policy uh, that defines dominance. So it defines it as um, at least half, I think is the phrase, um, within, the, within the text of the UDP. So as I say, that, that somewhat goes back to a time when we had a... Um, much greater control over the dominance of, sorry, I'm using the word dominance, I appreciate you perhaps not, don't necessarily agree with the interpretation, but uh, over the dominance of, um, of retail uses within the centre, uh, we have less influence over that now. Um, but that, that is where that phrase is taken from, and it, it's sort of defined further within the text of the policy. Would you like to come back? Yeah, I just want to say, uh, and obviously the, the issue is with the UDP policy, isn't it, then, in that case? Okay. Any further indications? Councillor Garvett. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that the, uh, the last measure of uh, the percentages of usage was in 2019. Um, just being in my ward, I'm very aware that an awful lot has changed since then. Um, including the opening of a lot of drinking establishments, not very far from here. Um, further down the road, out of Sheffield, towards uh, Derbyshire, there's uh, no more than two or 300 yards. There's probably about four or five different drinking establishments open. Um, is this a worry for you? Is this, does this uh, impact at all on the decision? Uh, Chair, we, we say within the report, I think, that um, in acknowledging that was in 2019, that there would have been a further reduction, we feel, since then in the number of retail units, um, but that we don't think that is uh, likely to be of a level that would take it below 50%. Um, Yes, that's at the bottom, bottom of page 22. So uh, it's not a concern for us bec because of that, because we think it, it, an updated figure we feel would be a little lower than 62. How much closer to 50, we're not entirely sure because we haven't, we haven't done a very recent, uh, the most recent survey. Um, but we, we were confident that it wouldn't be below uh, 50. Is that okay, Councillor Garvett? Councillor Price, uh, oh, comment, right. I'll move on to comments now. Right, Councillor Price. Just, just to say, Chair, I'm going to support the officer recommendation. I can't see any planning reasons for turning this down. I think we have a, um, a run-down building that's looking a bit dowdy, and um, I think this will uh, enhance the area and have a bit of um, vibrancy to, to that bit of Aberdeen Road. And so I fully support the recommendation, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Price. 
Councillor Price, Councillor Holyfield. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry, Councillor Holyfield. Can you hang on? We've got a, a, a late, a late up against the rails question. Councillor McCann. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just on the uh, light of the opening hours, which in base is not have a problem with, but obviously they will be applying for a liquor house license after this uh, event, presumably it goes through. Um, what control have, can we put on to make sure that the, the liquor license coincides with this time you, you put, proposed here? Chris? Uh, Chair, this is quite a common uh, question, isn't it? Um, the, the licensing process runs separately to the planning process, and, and you can, and as you're probably aware, end up with different times uh, through that. Um, so we, it, it is a separate process, so our, our influence over that is, is, is nil almost. Um, but what we would always say to an operator is that they have to operate within whatever is the most restrictive. Um, so if, if they applied for uh, and were successful in obtaining a uh, less restrictive license, then the, the planning hours would still be relevant and would still kick in. One doesn't kind of supersede the other in that respect. A, a later change to... Sorry, a later approval of licensing wouldn't then replace the, the planning hours. The planning hours would stay. Uh, and if they ever wanted to, uh, as occasionally people do, if, if ever they wanted to extend those hours in the future, they would have to come to us with an application to vary that condition. Thank you. Is that satisfactory? Yeah. Right, back to you, Councillor Humphrey. Uh, mine was also a question. Uh, you changed over to comments just as I put my hand up. Uh, so it was, uh, I wonder what the term traditional meant uh, in terms of the windows, because traditional on that road, or certainly historic on that road, would be timber and sash, certainly at the first floor level, uh, and I wonder what that meant. Uh, Chair, it was meant, I'll, if, if Jay wouldn't mind just returning to the uh, next to the last slide, please. Uh, yes, that one. Again, sorry for the small scale, but you can just about pick out there the difference from the top left-hand image to the um, top right-hand image. The, the reference to, tra to traditional was in terms of um, proportion. Um, there won't be timber siding slash windows. It, it was just in terms of proportion. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, I am going to go on with comments now. Councillor Williams, you were indicated. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, comments possibly a hint of a question as well. Um, it, they put, obviously put in quite a lot of good uh, faith and good store in their outside area. What, if anything, can we do to control that being heated in the winter? Um, that would concern me. Um, but as a, a comment also about the car parking, um, I acknowledge that um, they will have to go indoors after nine o'clock, which is fine. Um, my concern is that they will then have to come out at half past 11, and if they're in the car park, car doors can be very noisy, especially in the, at night. Um, I'm not sure we can control it, but certainly it's a comment to, to consider going forward. Okay, um, was, there a, was there a question in there? Uh, just basically about the outdoor heating, is there any any control we can put on? Right. Okay, Chris, is there any control? Uh, Chair, we're not recommending any control, and, and it's not something we would normally impose any control on. It's a matter for the, uh, for the operator. Okay, thank you, Chris. Right, um, I've now got Councillor Weatherall. Yes, thanks, Chair. It's... Uh, it's it's touching on what uh, Councillor McGann said uh, earlier about, uh, about times. I mean, some of the comments were saying, touching on, saying that uh, a cafe or something would be better down there. But if they're going to be open, uh, you know, from 9 till uh, 2300 hours, I think, you know, people are going in at 9 o'clock for a coffee or a cup of tea or a soft drink. They won't be going there for uh, pints of beer, in for thought anyway, Chair. Thanks. Just a comment. Thank you. I've got Councillor Sanger. 
Councillor Davison. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, it is, it's a rather larger uh, um, establishment as, in terms of a shop. In terms of a pub, it's, it's not too big, and I don't think there will be that many people to make it a, a rowdy place. It's not the kind of place that people go in when they're um, uh, in that kind of mood, and certainly I, I think the conditions that have been set are, are excellent. It's unusual now to see uh, something <laughs> you know, where we're losing pubs, to see uh, uh, somebody wanting to take this, uh, this on, uh, especially under the conditions um, that uh, have been imposed upon it. But um, I, would, um, I would go along with uh, what, um, what is proposed and the, under the conditions that they have been um, uh, uh, imposed. And so um, I, I'm in favour. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any more comments? I'll just check. Okay. Now, the officer recommendation is to grant conditionally. I shall go around the room. Um, starting with Councillor Rosalind Josephs. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Holmshaw. Uh, for the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Garbutt. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Price. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Dams. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Masters. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Sanger. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Davison. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Williams. Yeah, for the recommendation, Chair. <coughs> Councillor McCann. For the recommendation, Chair. And Councillor Weatherall. For, for the recommendation, Chair. That's a unanimous decision. Thank you very much. Um, the next agenda item, item 7B is a full planning application number 21-00266, FUL, um, for um, the, a change of use for hotel, Class C1, as A4 social housing, as 44 social housing dwellings, use Class C3. Um, and the location is the Quality Hotel, Sheffield North, on Lane End, Sheffield 35. Um, I believe this is your application, Diana. Would you like to present your report? Thank you, Chair. Chair, could we just move? Thank you. Um, in this slide, you can see the site of the Quality Hotel. It's on the northern side of Lane End in Chapel Town, uh, with access to the site taken from Hay House Drive, which is the uh, uh, the road off to the to the west of the site. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the site is located in the designated housing area. Uh, it's got housing on all sides, including, as you can see on this aerial shot, that green space, the sort of treed area to the right-hand side, is is currently being is under development now to provide 14 new properties. So we've got housing on all sides of the hotel site. Thank you. This is a photograph of the Quality Hotel as it, as it is now. Um, this is the original building, which has been extended to the north and to the east, as you can see here. And also in the next slide, you'll see the, the larger extension to the east of the original building. Uh, you can see the, um, uh, the car park in the foreground. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a view looking north along the eastern site boundary, which is on the right of the screen. So beyond that boundary is the new development site. Um, thank you. That's a view of the landscaped area to the south, to the southern end of the site, the south side of the car park, um, with lane end beyond that. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and just a photograph of some of the uh, extension to the building in the northwest corner of the site. That's a view looking north along Hay House Drive. You've got Lane M behind you. You've got the application site on the right, the, the entrance you can just about see, um, and, and looking, yeah, looking north along Hay House Drive. Next one. 
Uh, that's standing at the entrance to the site, looking back across Hay House Drive to the uh, nearest house on the opposite side of the road. And, and that's just a photograph taken, uh, looking back at the hotel, taken from the eastern side of the car park. So this is the proposed site plan. Um, there are no extensions or extensive external alterations proposed. Uh, and the car park and the grounds would largely remain unaltered uh, as shown in this plan. Thank you. The proposed ground floor plan, again, it's, it's difficult to read at this, uh, this scale, um, but um, it has sort of, way, if, if you consider it's a U shape and you look at the, the bottom, the entrance area is sort of in the middle uh, towards the bottom of the, the screen, just to the right of the uh, the middle there, uh, and that leads into an entrance reception area. To the left of that is a small gym uh, and adjoining changing rooms, and then the rest of the ground floor, other than a bin store and plant rooms, is taken over by 15 studio apartments. This is the uh, first floor, uh, and there are 21 studio apartments on this floor, and then a further eight uh, at second floor level in the roof space. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Um, these are the existing elevations. Um, it's probably just worth noting the bottom left hand side of your screen, that's the north facing elevation. So that's the elevation that's sort of closest to residential properties. There is already a lack of windows uh, in that elevation. Um, and some, some of the windows at first floor level are actually set sort of some distance um, away from the boundary. Um, but if you look at that and then you look at the next screen, which was the proposed elevations, again, very little change. Um, I think the key change is the removal of some of the external sort of uh, kitchen extraction equipment um, that currently serves the restaurant. And um, there are a couple of, uh, a few window sort of changes, amendments at ground floor level, uh, and that's it. Um, I, I think, um, as you know, the application, uh, I haven't got an awful lot to add to the report. Um, it, it's an application for the use of the hotel as 44 self-contained self studios for homeless people, as, as uh, def, uh, described by the applicants. Um, we recommended it for refusal for three reasons, as outlined in the report. Um, they are that it would result in instances of antisocial behaviour and fear of crime that would undermine the quality of life um, of local residents and the amenities of the locality. Secondly, that future residents of the uh, establishment would not have access to specialist support services due to the site's location and the lack of on-site facilities. Um, and also that the development uh, is inaccessible for people with impaired mobility. And finally, I will just draw your attention again to item one on the supplementary report, uh, which references that MPPF update and the um, seven relevant paragraph changes uh, in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Diana. I believe we have um, a number of speakers on this application, are they? Oh, right, you've got a runner today. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I think our first speaker is Andy Bainbridge. not as quick as you, I have to say. <laughs> All right. The oh, reason for that is um, they're in a room further away today. So it's got further to walk.
Thank you, Joe. Andy, thank you for coming. Welcome to the meeting. Make yourself comfortable. Um, you know how to, to work the speakers. And when, when, you're, uh, when you're ready, you have five minutes to make your point. Thank you. Okay, yes, you can hear me, yes. Thank you, Diane. Nice to see you again and uh, lots of other people in the room. Um, as you can imagine, um, I started um, opposing this application when I was a councillor. Uh, unfortunately, I, I just lost in May. Um, and we, we, we got up a petition, which I understand is not acceptable at a, a planning meeting, but I understand, Chair, that I can just read out what people uh, signed to. If I can say that there were 1,345 signatures and that has been sent uh, to planning to verify that they are correct uh, signatures, you know, it's not Mickey Mouse or whoever. Um, is it okay if I read out what the petition said? Yes, please do. Right. So, uh, you will understand that we still refer to it as Stainedrop Lodge. It's, it was Stainedrop Lodge. It was owned by the Newton and Chambers family that built the uh, Thorncliffe Industrial Estate. And the first, the hotel for many years was called Stainedrop. So, when I refer to Stainedrop, it is the quality in. Petition regarding the planning application for Stainedrop Lodge from Fair Home Group PLC. We, the undersigned, wish to formally object to the planning application from Fair Home Group PLC regarding the proposals for Stainedrop Lodge. The grounds of our objection are that, one, we believe the proposed extension to the premises and the subsequent lack of clear lettings policy of the Fair Homes Group does not address the support needs of the highly vulnerable residents they aim to attract or the concerns of the local councillors or residents. Two, that any application should have a detailed brief as to the commercial operation of its intended use and that the planners should therefore be able to look at what restrictions will be need, needed to not affect the local community, safeguards put in place and also the need for doctors, schools and other services needed for the scale of development and the possible residents. That the actual site is not suitable for an extension on the scale of the proposal being so closely sited to a major, major residential area. And four, that with the number of rooms being proposed, it would have implications on the road networks around the site and have an unwarranted impact on local residents. And I say 1,345 uh, people have put their name to that, to that uh, petition. Um, I, I too have three main uh, objections. The first one being for the type of residents that are being put there. Anyone who knows Chapel Town, it is right on the edge of Sheffield, um, very close to Rotherham and Barnsley. Um, and any services that, that people of this type might need, because they're very vulnerable people, um, are in other parts of the city. And it necessitates um, a, another two buses or a bus and a tram. There's no way that they can get the help that, that they need. And of course, vulnerable people are not good at, at, at doing things of that, of that type. You know, they, they, they don't like having to go out for things. So it, it, it's not good for them. Uh, Chapel Town and Ecclesfield, and, uh, Chapel Town and High Green themselves have uh, lost amenities over the, uh, the last few years, like anywhere else. There's only one bank in Chapel Town which doesn't deal in money, would you believe? Um, and there, are, there is a post office in, in High Green and one in Chapel Town. But again, it's a fair way away from, from that area. Um, but my main concern is that, that if you're going to take on people like this, you should be prepared to offer the services that they need. Um, my second one is that it's, it's wrong for the community. Um, this is a residential community. It was uh, ideal for a hotel, um, but um, a lot of antisocial behavior has ensued. Um, the, it was used for homeless uh, because of, of COVID under the, the government dire directive. Um, and gradually the city council has been trying to move people out from there because they have caused a lot of problems for local people. So again, it's not good for, for the community. And the third one is the anti, the, uh, 
the, the, the bad behaviour itself, which isn't a case of, I mean, I, I know from being on the council that you can't take what might happen, but has happened. The police have been called out on a number of occasions because of incidents there. I have personally seen needles, uh, bottles, cans thrown into the residential gardens of people who live around there. Um, and I've also, in the middle of the night, three and four o'clock, even though I don't live exceptionally close, but I don't live far away, I've heard people shouting and screaming. And I can see not far from my house, and when I've looked, I can see them hanging out of the windows. Um, so it, it, it's, it isn't that there's antisocial behaviour in prospect, there is already antisocial behaviour. So um, there's no way with what's offered that that's going to, to, to be improved. I, I notice in the report from your... Stop winding up, please. Right. I notice from the, the report from your officers that nothing has been, been offered to uh, obviate these things. So therefore, I, I would hope that, that you would all feel, as I do, that this needs, uh, uh, needs to be uh, uh, thrown out. It's just not acceptable in the area. Thank you, Diane. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Um, Jay, if you'd like to um, escort Andy out, I believe our second speaker is Councillor Mike Levery. So thank you. If you'd like to come in and take your seat at the central desk, um, when you make yourself comfortable, you have up to five minutes to your convenience. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, local councillors have been involved with this for some 14 months after the government came up with the um, rough sleepers emergency removal and legislation, which meant that Stendock Lodge was one of three hotels in the city that we used for housing rust sleepers. It was the largest by far, being the 36 bed hotel, and there's a small hotel in Netherheads that had 12, and a small one in the city centre. <coughs> the problems have gone on continuously, affecting local residents, including drug dealing, alcohol and drunkenness in the immediate area. And the major problem has been that any support services are located in the city centre. And so there was a limited amount of outreach done. We wrote, worked closely with the homeless team. And what is abundantly clear from them is that you would never house people with complex needs, um, whether it be drug, alcohol abuse, mental health issues, or uh, people released from prison in under one roof. They usually look for smaller establishments with a warden that can help move these people on to the right place. So um, this planning application, I must say I was disappointed with its lack of information. It's done no um, impact assessment on what this would do to the immediate community, which I think is important. Director of Housing has made it abundantly clear that it's not, they would not be commissioning people to go into a facility like this. And just to point out two things on the application, one in comments in the design and access statement in January, which said the proposed investment will create 44 affordable studio flats. 
with all the necessary modern amenities, including kitchen and ensuite facilities. These changes will provide modern and attractive living accommodation for people in need at a price they can afford. There is an urgent need for small, affordable homes in the urban areas of Sheffield. Forward to May 2021, five months later, and look, we've got a paper on the management and operational arrangements which states, we will grant assured short hold tenancies for a minimum period of six months as the accommodation is self-contained. Stain Drop Lodge will offer short-term accommodation rather than a home for life. So within the whole of the planning application, there are contradictions about what it's actually saying this will be used for. So I fully support the officer's recommendation for refusal, and I'd like to um, ask members to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, Jay will, will take that safety, and if you could bring Adam Hurst in, who's our final speaker. We would be disappointed with you if you didn't, Roger. We would be disappointed if you didn't. Adam, hello, welcome. Please take your seat at the central desk. You know how to operate the console. Um, yep, you have up to five minutes um, at your convenience. Okay, well, hello, everybody. Thanks very much for letting me speak. Um, hopefully... And uncharacteristically, I probably won't speak for the full five minutes, which will be a relief to everybody. I think that my previous two speakers have said quite a lot, and I think also in the report, there's a lot in there which I think is self-explanatory. Uh, one or two points that I would like to emphasize, however, and I think if you look, and I think it's on page 38 of your papers, uh, from, there's comments, I think, from Janet Sharp, the Director of Housing, about... Sheffield City Council having no agreements in place with the developer to make referrals to the service. And going on, and, and going on to say how they, you know, for this vulnerable group and for homeless people, people at risk of homelessness in Sheffield, we would be commissioning with other organisations. So this isn't just about um, supporting the officer's uh, recommendation to refuse planning application to help people who are you know, clearly facing uh, problems. It doesn't look as if it would be people from Sheffield, and obviously that this is really, really important that we have uh, issues here. So as I say, I think that is an important part, uh, point from the director. Um, and I think it's on page 38, if my memory is right. The only other points that I would like to make um, uh, are really just to emphasise, um, I think when you are looking at homeless people, uh, you're pe looking at people who have already slipped through both informal support, family support, and statutory support. So you are asking an area to absorb people who, for one reason or another, need adi you know, additional help. I think that the area also, in situations like that, needs additional support. Um, we're talking about a lot of elderly people living in those houses that border the facilities, people with health needs, and people where there is clear stress and that needs to be sorted. People who want their grandchildren to play in the gardens, and I have actually, again, like uh, Andy Bainbridge, when I've been doing uh, casework around there, I have seen the debris that is thrown over from Stain Drop Lodge into people's gardens. So this antisocial behavior isn't something that may happen, it's something that happened. I think the proximity to two local schools is also important. Um, 
and I think also the, the bus stop issue, because let's be honest, buses in this city are notoriously unreliable. And I think that there is an issue about people often waiting at the buses when, you know, there is uh, maybe feeling vulnerable in that particular area. I've certainly witnessed clear antisocial and aggressive behaviour on at least one of the occasions when I've been up there in, in mid-afternoon and have no reason to disbelieve any of the other reports I'm hearing from people. Um, the houses literally back onto uh, the, the, the hotel itself, certainly on Hay House Way. I mean, it really is. It's not in the backyard, it's almost the border of the backyard. Um, so really, my, 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 my points are, um, I, um, the proposal is for more units for vulnerable people who will receive less support. So the original plan, the original service was part of the emergency COVID measures. The hotel closed and was used, I think, to house 38 people where there was, uh, I think, 24-7 support on site. The proposal is for support for a similar group of people who may, and in more probability, won't be from Sheffield with even less support. Um, and I really just cannot see how that can be uh, consistent with what we're trying to do in the city. Um, it was a temporary measure, and also what I witnessed uh, through issues in April and May when I was admittedly doing a bit of campaigning around there, but also picking up um, a, a fairly large amount of casework, has convinced me that the development would pose a significant risk to the well-being of people living in the area. I think if you look at the bungalows on Hay House Way, it is people, it tends to be older people, people might actually suffer more from the stressful situation. I don't think there's anything more that I would like to add because I think that the officer's report and, and the comments that are already in there speak for themselves. So thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Um, oh, gosh, Adam, sorry. Um, do you want to um, respond to, to that? No, nothing? Okay. Um, in that case, I will open it up for member questions. Member comments. Councillor Downs. Um, I, I shall be voting with the officer's recommendation. Um, I do have um, some experience of this. For three years, I was regional organiser for shelter. And for 20 years, I worked for two specialist housing associations accommodating the people that we're talking about and managed two hostels, one in Doncaster and one in Bradford. Hostels like this can work and can be a valuable part of rehab for people, but they have to be properly supervised. They have to have the specialist support and they need to be close to um, specialist support. And I think, you know, th this might be a lovely setting for a hotel, but it's far too isolated, in my opinion, for this sort of project. It, properly run and properly managed and supervised, they can prepare people for independent living. Um, and uh, they can be very useful, not always successful, but they can be very useful. This proposal has none of that. Um, and that's why I think people are complaining um, because there's no supervision. I, I think it could, we need a hostel, we need more accommodation for vulnerable people, but this isn't it, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. I've got Councillor Davis, and you wanted to make a... a, a... Uh, first of all, um, uh, St Wilfred's is uh, spelt St Wilfords in here. Uh, that's on page 32. Uh, I am a, a, a member of uh, St Wilfred's board, and we, we do have a, uh, a homeless unit there. The difference is that uh, they can go to a day center uh, and they can learn crafts or they can do social uh, events. Nothing of that uh, seems to be uh, in place at this um, one in Chapel Town. And the fact that, that it is away from uh, many residential folk is very, very well managed because nobody's ever complained uh, uh, about um, litter there and if anybody takes a look you, you can see how well managed it is so you do need a place that is well managed 
that knows what they're doing, that knows how to look after people uh, when they're not uh, in their, uh, their rooms, where they can try and turn their lives around. And I think that, that is a very important I issue with uh, something of this kind of size. Now, I know they do have um, uh, some kind of hostels in Chapel Town because uh, I know some of the uh, rough sleepers uh, have been uh, 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 sent in that direction, but, but not in such uh, large, um, large numbers. So I would say, yes, uh, I agree totally with what uh, 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 Councillor Dams has just um, uh, said, and uh, uh, Councillor Dams is somebody who knows this area, uh, this kind of area of... Um, uh, uh, of homelessness and expertise, he's, he's got this expertise in homelessness uh, it, it greater, greater than, uh, than I do. But I would say that um, uh, we, uh, I'm sure that, uh, <laughs> well, we both agree that in the right place, in the right setting, it would be um, a good thing uh, to have. But they've got to be well looked after and they've got to have uh, uh, places like a day centre where they can go to socialise, where they can go to learn trades, where they can ha have their lives potentially turned around. For, uh, and they're looked after in terms of how to pay bills and that sort of thing, which is very, very important because many of them don't know how to deal with uh, um, post, uh, particularly bills, which tend to get uh, thrown to one side. So uh, I, I, I'm with uh, Tony on this, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but I go with the... Um, uh, with the, uh, the uh, officer's recommendation. Thank you, Roger. I've got Councillor Peter Parr. Thank you. Um, similar theme, really, Chair. I think as we, as elected members, have duties to find homes for the homeless, and, uh, and, and we should. But at the same time, we have a duty to find homes, proper homes, homes that can be sustainable. And I think that this is totally inappropriate. It's too large. It has, hasn't got the support units uh, nearby. It hasn't got provisions. And I think it would make the, it would make the, the accommodation poorer for these people, the, the, the people who need help. Uh, and I just think that, you know, we've got to look elsewhere for smaller units that have the supporting communities. And I think this would be a disaster if we gave permission. Uh, you know, within, within a very few months, I think it would uh, it would be a problem for not just the community, but for the, the, the residents themselves. So I'm going to support the officer's recommendation, Chair. Thank you, Peter. Next on the list is Councillor Bob McKay. Thank you, Chair. Pretty much agreeing with what people are saying. I mean, in the past, I've been involved with um, people at uh, uh, Salvation Army, the Phoenix House, the Mayors, people like that. And again, this, the theme is, you know, it's, it's building a structure for people with problems. And they have, they have got problems and they need dealing with, this, whether it's uh, alcohol or uh, drug addiction or mental health issues. But they need 24-7 support to in order to get the, the, their lives back on track. And again, I agree with everybody else. There's no sign of anything that's in here. I think this is just mainly a case of, well, we pro we've provided somewhere for them to live and collect the rent. Uh, I don't see it's going to help anybody other than the landlords earning money. So I'll be supporting the application. Thank you, Councillor McCann. We've got Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, I support everything I've heard. I think, yeah, it's clearly not right. Um, just coming back to the reasons for refusal, though, I notice in the first and second, uh, the text clearly states that the development would be contrary to UDP policies. But in the third one, it's at the phrase, it is considered that the development would be contrary, has been added. Does that mean, may I ask the officers, are you a little less robust on that one, or, or could we take it out? I, I think the meaning is the same. I don't think there's any, it, it's not intended to be different or, uh, or ambiguous. Um, if, if members wanted, we could firm up the wording. I don't think we would have a problem with that. It's, it's clarity is what we strive for. I think the committee can support that. Yeah, okay. Um, so moving on to Councillor Garber. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be supporting the officer's recommendation here. I think the numbers are too high. 
it's very difficult to provide adequate management and, uh, um, and, and guidance to that large number of people under one roof. I think we, if we're going to house people, and we should be housing people, uh, we would probably need about three, maybe four or five even, uh, to house that many. Um, it's in a place which doesn't have any uh, additional support for uh, people with such problems. The rooms are very small. Um, and I just think that this is probably a situation where the people who most need the help are actually going to be coming away from there worse off than they were before. Uh, and I, I, I think that's a real, real bad situation. So I will certainly be uh, supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Garvett. Uh, next on the list, I've got Councillor Holmshaw, followed by Councillor Sanger. Uh, thank you. Um, I think I've got to agree with a lot of what the other councillors have been saying. There doesn't seem to be a, a structural plan to be able to support 44 vulnerable residents. Um, there's little detail of, of the staffing or the management uh, being provided. Um, I think well supported, well managed, small scale, scale hostels or hotels, that's the way forward. Maybe 12 or 15 rooms is about as much as you want to go to. I've seen them in operation, for example, in Netheredge, uh, which was mentioned as well by one of the, uh, one of the people uh, earlier. Uh, they're much better. Uh, and I'm actually dismayed by the size of some of the rooms that are suggested. They're well below space standards at the national or South Yorkshire level. Some only 20 meters squared or just over 20 meters squared. Uh, when the nationally described space standard is 37 square metres. So I will be uh, supporting the officer and what many of the other councillors have been saying. Thank you, Councillor Humshaw. We've got Councillor Sanger now. Yeah, uh, th thank you, Chair. I mean, I shall be supporting my, my colleagues and the officers in, in refusing this application. Um, clearly, we're going for all three reasons. And I've heard about Councillor Williams talking about the, the need to make sure that the that the recommendation on the, the reason on disability is as strong as the other two and I, I, I fully support that. But it, but equally, you know, let's talk about the other ones. I mean I mean there clearly has been a challenge for the council in terms of using this as emergency homeless homelessness accommodation. Um, and clearly the residents have had an issue with antisocial behaviour. Um, and that would only be worse given the, the level of support it is support envisaged. But but I think quite rightly, colleagues have all talked about the second reason that we just don't feel this is in the right place. This is too big, uh, too big, a, uh, too, too big a, um, a, a, a temporary a, a hostel accommodation for, for homeless, homeless people. That all, when you talk to people who work in the sector, they do not work in units of 36 or 40 or 44, and it's just not it's not how it's not how homelessness is tackled given. Um, the challenges of the individuals who, 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 who present as, as homelessness, as, as homeless and, and the wraparound services that, that are required. And we know in Sheffield that those services are largely found within the city centre. So putting something out in Chapel Town is not going to work. But it's certainly not going to work if it's 44. So it's just the wrong size in, in, the, in the wrong position without the wraparound services. So I will be... I will, uh, I will be um, backing the officers and refusing this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And my last speaker that I'll be calling is Councillor Gary Weddle. Gary. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm going to keep it short because uh, all the speakers uh, before me has uh, mentioned everything I want to mention. Uh, and I should be uh, going with a recommendation with the uh, officers, Chair, to refuse. Uh, but I think what we've missed uh, in, in and bring it, what we've got to think of is that the people, what's gone out there, like Andy Bainbridge, who's, who's took this petition, and when he lost his seat, he carried on doing that for the residents of that area and, and for Chapel Town. You know, and the people would have used this place if, 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 if it goes through today. Uh, so uh, I've just got to take my hat off to Andy uh, for, for working uh, hard with other councillors as well, you know, for 14 months in, in this area for this chair. Thanks. Thank you. 
second point, I'm going to go straight into the vote now. The officer recommendation is for, is to refuse. So, for the reasons set out in the report below, I'm going to go around the room. Councillor Rosalind Joseph. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Holmshaw. Uh, for the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Garver. For the officer's recommendation, Chair. Councillor Price. Support the officer's recommendation, Chair. Councillor Downs. For the officer recommendation, Chair. Councillor Masters. For the recommendations, Chair. Councillor Sanger. Uh, for the officer's recommendation, Chair. Councillor Davison. Uh, support the officer's recommendation. Councillor Williams. Yes, support the officer's recommendation, Chair. Councillor McCann. For the recommendation, Chair. And Councillor Redwall. For the officer's recommendation, Chair. That's unanimous. Yep. That application is refused. Thank you very much. Our final application on the agenda today is an outline planning application number 20-03752-OUT. And it's an outline application with all matters reserved, the erection of an apartment block comprising up to 10 apartments and the location is, the da is Daisy Chain at Middlewood Villas, 95 Langsett Road South, and that's Sheffield 35. Diana, would you like to present the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Jane. So uh, on this slide, uh, you can see the application site. It occupies a rectangular shaped parcel of land between Forge Hill to the north and Langsett Road south uh, in Eaterbridge. The site's located in a designated housing area. It's adjacent to a small area of informal open space to the southeast. That's the sort of tip of the triangle just to the east of the site, which we saw yesterday on the site visit. Um, land to the west of the application site, which includes the former children's nursery, which, is, which closed uh, a year or so ago, uh, and the Travellers, Travellers Rest Pub. Uh, they both form part of the designated local shopping area, which uh, extends from the western boundary of the site to the west. Uh, to the north, um, you might be able to just make out the River Don, uh, which sort of um, swivels to the north of the site. Uh, and beyond that is an area, a large area of formal open space, which is used as a sports ground. Thank you, Jane. So this photograph is taken from Forge Hill. Uh, looking south, with the um, the site uh, in the middle of the picture, you can see the change in level across the site, um, with the sort of lower tier uh, parking area. The upper tier um, was in use as a garden area for the playground. It's got a fence around it there. You can't you can make that out. Um, and the change in level across the site is about a story. Thank you. This is also taken from Forge Hill, but this is looking west uh, with the area of informal open space on the left um, in the foreground uh, and the split level site in the midground, difficult to make out. And then you can just see the former nursery buildings uh, beyond that. Um, it's worth pointing out, and you'll also see this on plan later on, that the nursery buildings on both levels, so the, the, the building, the sort of taller building on Langsett Road South and then the single storey building on Forge Hill, they are both owned by the applicant. Next slide, please, thank you. Um, this is a view looking west, um, northwest, sorry, along Langsett Road South. You've got the informal open space this time on the right, uh, the application site in the mid-ground and then the um, nursery in the background, partly obscured by uh, the parked cars there. Uh, next slide. Uh, and this is a view looking southeast along Langsett Road South with the former nursery on the left. Thank you. Uh, this is a view looking uh, towards the application site uh, from the area of informal space. And then um, this is just another view of the site taken uh, from the north side of Forge Hill looking back. Um, you can see where the point at which vehicular access is taken from um, Forge Hill. Um, you may just be able to make out on this slide uh, the site area outlined in red, the, uh, which is the, the sort of rectangle in the middle, and the former nursery buildings to the west of that outlined in blue 
indicating that they are in the same ownership. At the bottom of the slide, you can see a northwest section that runs through the site, illustrating the change in level there with uh, Langsit Road South on the right of the screen and Forge Hill uh, on the left. Thank you. Um, Outline Planning Permission is sought for the erection of up to 10 apartments with all matters reserved, which to clarify means that matters relating to access, appearance, layout, scale, and landscaping are all reserved for subsequent approval. Thank you. The submitted plans are all indicative and they indicate that vehicular access could be taken from Forge Hill, which is the, 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 the point at which uh, access, vehicular access is taken from at the moment, uh, and that a gap could be retained to the former nursery buildings to protect the amenities of the occupants of that building should permission be sought to change it back to a dwelling house at a later stage. I think that that plan shows a 12 metre gap um, between the properties. Again, this is purely an indicative plan, but showing how parking spaces could be accommodated in an undercroft car park. Thank you. Uh, and finally, uh, some indicative sections showing a stepped development with two storeys to each of the site frontages. So if you look at the top section through there, uh, you, Langsit Road South on the right with two storeys um, and the, the development steps down, so you have two storeys presenting to, to Forge Hill uh, as well. Um, bearing in mind the significant weight the government attaches to boosting the supply of new homes and to developing previously development land in sustainable locations, it's recommended in this instance that outline planning permission with all matters reserved is granted subject to the proposed conditions. And if I can just draw your attention once more to the supplementary report, um, that's item two on the supplementary report, um, where there is reference to two additional representations um, raising parking related issues, which are already addressed in the uh, committee report, as well as the MPPF update and subsequent changes to the paragraph numbers. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Diana. We have a speaker on this um, matter, just one speaker, who is four. So, um, if you'd like to welcome them to the meeting, please, Jo. Thank you, Jo. Mr. Beadlestone? Hello. Um, Derek, where are they? Take a seat, make yourself comfortable. Um, the button in the centre of the console brings the microphone on. You have up to five minutes at your convenience. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Derek Beadlestone. I'm the joint owner of the site we discussed today. I think the only other person I know in the room is Peter Price. Actually, I think met 15, 17 years ago when the original application went in for nursery. There are, I believe, three main issues to take into account when considering this application. They are, I believe, in no particular order, neighbours' objections, traffic issues, and land use. Firstly, neighbours' objections. Some revised plans were submitted based on planning officer recommendations, reducing the overall height of the building, that's on page 74 of the report. Traffic issues. Previous uses in nursery resulted in traffic between 7.30 and 9 and 4.30 to 6, primarily, when they used to drop off and pick up approximately 25 to 30 children. I know those numbers really well, because I was there a number of years. I think the actual traffic, you know, uh, access to the car park could actually be reduced 
10 a quarter month blocked. And on page 78 of the report, we come down to land use. I'm not an expert in local and national policy, but I do believe it's a brownfield site, it's previous use was commercial. In line with national policy, brownfield should be considered prime for redevelopment to reduce pressure on the green belt. In conclusion, I ask you to support the application. It provides much needed accommodation in the area, will pro provide revenue for the council with sale and ongoing council tax. And I believe all issues raised have been addressed and are balanced. The application should be approved as recommended by the planning department. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Well, what a concise report. Thank you very much. Um, Jay, we'll take you after the, the meeting uh, while I pass over to Diana. Is there anything you'd like to say to address those comments? Nothing to add to that, Chair. Thank you for your time. Right, I open it up to. M <laughs> I'll open it up to questions, and Councillor Master is indicating. Yeah, first of all, a clarification. I mean, if we give out line planning permission, it's for 10 apartments. So the full planning can't come back for, say, 10 dwellings, either houses or a mixture of houses and apartments, would that be correct? Yes, that's right, it's up to 10 apartments. But um, it's got so to be apartments. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the description is uh, yeah, up to 10 apartments. We can't have uh, dwelling houses unless they must submit a new application. Right, and, and the second point is, I mean, on the plan, it actually shows that two of those units have got to be facing, um, for, hang on, Forge Road, isn't it? Um, and they're going to have the cars moving both sides of them because there'll be cars moving in the car parking area. And, I mean, to be quite honest, if that's the only way of fitting in eight or ten apartments for having these two right on the road, um, you're exposing them to all sorts of extra noise, pollution, you've got queuing traffic trying to move on to Langset Road, either left or right. You know, um, I, know I know you're saying up to but that does seem sort of a bit excessive if that's how they're going to be accommodated. Mm. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, it's up, up to 10 apartments. That is an indicative sketch. Uh, it, it's not a, a proposal for developing. It's just a way of fitting in up to 10 apartments. Um, I mean, we already have a number of properties that face onto Forge Hill um, in the immediate vicinity, and we have apartments a little bit further back along Forge Hill as we as we saw yesterday. Um, they could be set back from, from the road so they could have small areas of landscaping in front of them. They would probably in that scenario be single aspect so although they would have a car park behind them they wouldn't you know, sort of uh, be aware of that because you, you, you would have solid walls at that in that location. Um, so it is difficult with outline to it's not to make assumptions, um, but um, that the indicative sketches are only one way of of, of, of how the, the scheme could how up to ten apartments could be fitted onto that land. And I suppose the last thing is sort of asking about we if if we approve it, we can still put in recommendations, uh, you know, sort of suggesting say less, suggesting not having apartments right next to the road like that maybe sort of looking for mixed use sites or something we could put in the recommendation but that would not um carry any weight it's just a su suggestion i think because the application is only for residential we probably be hard pushed to recommend other uses no um, sorry i meant mixed sort of housing this mixed ten, yeah mi mixed size apartment or make a mix of apartment types certainly you, we could we could add a directive uh, to indicate the level of apartments that uh, members feel could be accommodated on the site. But as you say, it, does, it carries little weight. The application itself is for up to 10 apartments. And then at reserve matter stage, we would make the assessment on whether what is being proposed is acceptable in accordance with all the usual policies and criteria. Thank you. Councillor Sanger, you indicated. Thank, 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 thank you, Chair. Uh, I mean, first of all, can I say how useful the... I mean, it was, it, it was useful that we had a site visit and it was really good that we had a, a, a very good turnout. Um, I mean, because we, you don't get the topography 
see from these pictures, and however good the, the drawings are, I think a site visit really gets you a, a better idea, a, 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 a idea of the site. So, so I think my, my concerns really from, from, from the site visit was the, the traffic noise from Forge Hill, and I don't get how whatever is built on this, what is going to be done in terms of the people who end up living there, how they will cope with that level of traffic noise. And the second question, following on from what Council Masters has said, is just in terms of this issue about, about, 10, big, ten, about 10 apartments, because clearly a number of the, the residents' comments are about a smaller number of apartments, a smaller number of bigger apartments might be a, a different way of handling this. And are, are you effectively saying we cannot deal with that at this stage, just 10 is a maximum number? That's really all we can do at this stage. Is that, is that, is that, is that the correct? Uh, thank you, Chair. Diana? Thank you, Chair. In terms of traffic noise, this is a housing area. It's surrounded by housing, um, other than the former nursery and, and the pub to the, to the west of that. And it has housing to the to north and the south. Um, it, it, it's not a particularly noisy location. Um, and, uh, you know, a tenure, Double glazing or other attenuation methods would, would deal with any any traffic noise uh, quite easily in comparison to other noisy sites. So we're quite satisfied that in terms of the noise environment, um, this is this is suitable. In terms of the outline application, yes, it's a maximum of ten. The at reserve matter stage, the applicant might come back with six three bedroom apartments or or a different configuration. Um, at this stage, other than attaching a directive as, as previously, previously suggested, which would carry very little weight, but may guide the applicant to what the council would like to see. Um, uh, that could be attached, but otherwise it is just a maximum of 10. Thank you. Um, I've also got Councillor Davison. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see um, uh, put into any uh, plan is disability access. Now, I know it's a, because of the lay of the land, uh, the top road it would be easy access into a flat, but that, but that doesn't cover where they're parking their cars because the cars would be parked underneath. So there must be some way of, a, a, a good way of accessing the, from top to bottom. So it, it would need a lift of some sort. Um, the other thing that concerns me is the, um, uh, ingress and uh, egress of the uh, of the traffic um, it's, it's a one-way system so you can't back out into the road so there have to be uh, conditions where the, it, I mean it does look as if there's enough room on here but we don't know what the sizes are uh, looking at this uh, uh, this plan here but there would certainly have to be enough room for a car to turn around so that it is facing the, the road as it uh, as it uh, goes out um, this was solved we saw last week by somebody having a turn table in an underground car park at Nether Edge. So, uh, uh, sorry, at uh, Machen Bank, I should say. And, not, not Machen Bank, uh, sorry, not Machen Bank, the one at, yeah, it's, goes up from Hunter's Bar. Rocker. Rocker Bank, Rocker Bank. Um, that's right. So, we saw that it can be done. Uh, so, it does, it is of necessity to have a car that will, um, will, will, Come in, it, it'll always come in front way, um, ways, won't it? But it, it's got to go out front ways as well. So I, th I think uh, that would have to be uh, uh, something that we need to, to look at it in a, in a planning application. Can we put that in as a condition? Was there a question there? Yeah, 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 that, that was the question. And can we have, uh, uh, make sure that there's disability access? That's, those are two questions. Do you want to turn your mic off, Roger? Oh, sorry. Dan, do you want to respond to that? Oh, Helen, you might be better placed. Jay, can you do the white note? Ah, thank you. Uh, now, in terms of, of the ingress and egress for um, vehicles, I completely agree with you that it will be vital that they go in and out in a forward gear um, and any future layout that we consider will ensure that adequate turning is provided, whether it be by means of a turntable or, or a more traditional method, but yes, that will be provided. Thank you, Helen. 
Um, I also have, um, hang on, where am I? Councillor Holmshaw. All right, thank you. Um, I'm glad I've made the visit um, because what you don't also get from the photographs is, for me, I find the site very cramped and constrained. Uh, and that worries me because I think this development is crying out to be a car free one. So are there any directives that we can place on this, on the control, the number of cars, on the application, or are all those reserved for the future? Councillor, um, is that, was that, would that be you, Helen? Or are you going to juggle it between you? <laughs> we will consider the level of parking that's proposed at the time um, in accordance with the Council's parking standards and um, we will take into consideration uh, the sustainable location um, and the size of the site and then it, you know trying to achieve um, access uh, ingress and egress in a forward gear will uh, mean that some land will need to be set aside for turning uh, and also land will need to be set aside for amenity space so all these matters um, would have to be considered um, at reserved uh, matter stage Thank you, Diana. Um, I've now got Councillor Bams. Well, I've learned something today. It's embarrassing that I've learned it from Roger Davidson, but nevertheless. But is there a difference between reversing onto a normal estate road uh, and reversing into this? Because I go past it quite a lot. My wife's come up to this. Um, so I, I would have thought it's perfectly acceptable. You've only got one way to look when you're reversing on a wrong way. So. Is that then illegal? Chair, it's not actually illegal. Um, but what we do is, is on any sort of classified or busier road, we would normally want on-site turning, um, particularly where you're actually sort of coming into a car parking situation, if you like. Um, I mean, it, it, it isn't always possible. But I think, given the nature of the road and given the, the you, you know, the, the, the degree of traffic on there in this instance, we would want to ensure that they were coming in and out in a forward gear. And as I said, particularly when you've got a car parking situation, because what you've got to be mindful of is that you've got boundary walls then. And if you're not very careful, you start limiting your pedestrian and vehicle into visibility, which is even worse if you're reversing it. Thank you for that. Is it, um, is it something then that we can insist on? that um, it has to be accessible by uh, coming out of it by a forward gear? Or, you know, is it something that we would like? Chair, as I say, I think in this particular instance, it's something that we would insist on. Just to clarify, because the reserve matters, because this is outlined, that matter will be considered when we received a, um, the, the reserve matters report. I have no more questions, but I've got a comment from Councillor Price. I mean, I don't like agreeing to outline plan permission for a start. However, having been to this site, I don't see any, I think it's big enough, easily, to, to host uh, up to 10 apartments. And I don't understand this worry about the, the traffic. There's traffic lights at the end, and the traffic is constantly being stopped. So there's always a gap. <laughs> you have to wait for long before it's stopped. Plus the fact that if you, if you look left, there's a large block of flats less than 100 yards away, uh, right up to the road. So I don't understand the, the, how that differs from this, 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 um, this site. I thought it was adequate. I thought the topography lends itself. Because I mean, if, if you're talking up to 10, that means a, a, a base of five. Uh, and I thought it was perfectly adequate to host uh, up to 10 with the car parking underneath uh, uh, with, uh, already in front. So I'm happy to go along with officer recommendation, Chair. Um, as I say, it's, it's outlined, so it's always difficult, but uh, I'm sure the office will keep a tight grip on that. But this, not backing out, I'm like, I back out of my drive all the time and I've got two way traffic. I'll show you the news. <laughs> and I haven't got a traffic light that's stopping them every few minutes at, at the end of the, turn of the road, so things cross. So, anyway, I'm supporting the officer recommendation, Chair. Thank you, Peter. I've got another comment from Councillor Sangham. 
thank you, Chair. I mean, I, th I think that this application shows the challenge that outline for, provides for both us and, and the residents, that so many of the issues that the residents have raised um, are reserved matters. And, and I think, you know, I think I, you know, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation because it's developed land, it's, it, 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 it's previously developed land, and therefore it's going to be built on and housing's as good a use as, as any in this in this this location. So, so, I, so I, I will be supporting it, but I do would I would like to add some sort of recommendation or some sort of directive to say that the reserved matters, when we get a, a full application, should come back to this committee because I think then we can have a proper discussion about the proposals for the the access and the, and the egress and about the size and about other issues which are clearly reserved matters and, and, and are not for discussion today. So if I could do that, Chair, uh, to have some sort of a assurance that it could come back, that the full application comes back to this committee. But with that, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a, a, a question there, Daniel. Is that something that we can ask for at this stage? Yeah? I certainly think we could have that minuted. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, we could have that minuted. We could add a, um, uh, a directive. Uh, we would normally only bring an application back to committee um, if we sort of received a certain level of objection. I mean, I, I argue that's pro probably likely in this case anyway. Um, but I don't see why we can't make a note of that in some form of, of directive that it's, it, it ought to come back to committee. Thank you, Daniel. Would the meeting accept that directive? Okay. Um, I have, and I'm going to assume these are comments rather than dialogues or conversations. I have Councillor Peter Garbutt. Yes, I'll keep it as brief as I can, Chair. Um, uh, like Councillor Price, I really don't like uh, these outline uh, permissions, but I've seen absolutely no planning reason why we should object to it here. Um, so I will be going with the officer's recommendation. Um, Diane, you wanted to come in for just a second. Thank you. Can I just ask for clarity? We've obviously got um, five reserved matters, uh, items, five reserved matters. So that's access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. In theory, they could all come in separately. Uh, and I'm assuming that you wouldn't want all of them to come to committee. Are there any in particular that you? Well, I mean, it's it's the it's the access and, and scale. Access and um, scale. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something different to ten. I think is what we're interested in. If they come back with a different proposal, is, it, is that is that okay? That's fine. Right. Um, I have also for comment now, Councillor Gary Weatherall. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I don't know where this is going to fit in, actually. Uh, when we were on site, Chair, we, uh, we saw our uh, ASHBY supporting the recommendation, by the way. Uh, but when we were on site, we saw a defibrillator, and it's all in use and still accessible. Uh, so it's still on the 999 register. And I just wondered if the developer would put this into... Um, into the complex somewhere. I don't know. I know we can't, you know, say you've got to, but by it's on site and it's already registered, I just wonder if we can uh, put it in a comment back to uh, the developer. Thank you, Chair. Actually, that's a really important point, Councillor. Um, there was a, a, a defibrillator there on the outside wall in the car park, and it would, I, I would be loath to lose it, and I don't know how we, we deal with that at this stage. The defibrillator was outside the application site. It was in the blue line boundary, so it's within, within the applicant's ownership, but not within the application site. Uh, again, we could attach a, a, an informative or a directive just sort of saying that we, we, we hope it's retained in close proximity or, or where it is. Well, I guess much will depend if, it, you know, when they submit an app, if and when they submit an application for change of use of that premises, whether the person living there wants to a defibrillator, so it may be that it needs to be moved, but um, if it can be kept close by, we could, we could certainly put that request in. Thank you for that, Diana. Um, 
that's an important point. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, I have uh, Councillor Williams now. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, outline from, uh, applications are always difficult. I mean, the bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, is that this is actually an application for 10 apartments, um, because that's, I'm sure, what they're thinking about. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking for up to 10. Um, and in that case, I'm looking at that site, which you saw yesterday, and I felt that actually 10 apartments on that site with parking, parking for visitors, etc., etc., is really squeezing it. Um, so I have some real reservations, um, but I guess as it's an outline planning permission, I will be supporting the officers. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, I've got Councillor Davison. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I think we're all of one mind of the difficulties um, with outline uh, planning. Uh, just to uh, satisfy the, um, Councillor Price, uh, if you look at the outline uh, drawing there, there would be an arch there. You couldn't back out of an arch because the sight lines would, uh, uh, would be difficult. Well, they would be obscured. So you can't, uh, and in fact, uh, it's more difficult to to reverse into a, um, a one-way system than it is into a two-way system, I might add. There's more cars coming at you. So um, I think that is an important point that we, we make, that it is um, uh, that the cars are facing forwards when they, when they go out. But I will um, accept the um, situation uh, as we've got it now. Uh, but uh, the other thing was, um, Councillor uh, Sangar mentioned that he hoped that this was when, um, uh, when, when the full plans come out, that it is brought to the, this committee. That's all I would request. Otherwise, I'm with you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, and I have Councillor Barbara Masters. Thank you, Chair. It, it is a comment. I mean, I think it's a lost opportunity because there's a huge... If you read the comments, um, people want housing, but they want houses. And I have seen similar sites in other parts of Sheffield which would easily accommodate eight highly sustainable houses that would fit into that landscape very well, each individual plot. I just think it's a lost opportunity. But um, I'd have to reluctantly sort of um, approve, well, go with the officer recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. I now have Councillor Hunshaw. I, uh, I was listening very closely to what uh, Councillor uh, Richard Williams was saying, and uh, he's saying about the sustainability of the site in terms of its size and scale. I, I think it's too constrained for 10 houses. If there was some kind of limit down to a few less, I'd be much more convinced about voting for this. As it stands, I don't think it is a sustainable uh, application. Uh, so I'll be voting uh, against the officer recommendation, unfortunately. I've not been convinced up to now from the directive that has been put forward to, to follow up. Thank you, Councillor. And last but not least, Councillor Tony Downs. Yeah, I think we've all got concerns about how this is going to pan out. Um, and I think, you know, um, I'm going to agree with the officers, but except we need to have a good look when the proposals come by. And I don't like disagreeing with Councillor Masters, but not all people want housing. A number of people want flats. Um, and um, when we go out, we can apologise, and I'll accept it gracefully, Councillor Masters. Well, I'd like to reply now. <laughs> I rest, did mention the comments, and there's quite a lot of apartments in that area already. Right, thank you for that. I think even in comments, we've had quite a lively debate. Um, right, I'm sh I shall go around the room now. The officer recommendation is to grant this outline planning application conditionally for the reasons as set out in the report. Councillor Chris Robin Joseph. <coughs> for the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Homshaw. Against the recommendation, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Garber. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Price. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Jams. For the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Masters. Support the recommendation, Chair. Councillor Sangar. For the officer's recommendation, Chair.
Mr. Davison. For the recommendation to the chair. Uh, Councillor Williams. In support of the officer's recommendation, chair. Councillor McCann. For the recommendation, chair. And the last word to you, Councillor Webb. For the recommendation, chair. That recommendation is carried. Thank you very much. Um, now, can I just draw your attention to the um, record of planning appeals submissions um, and the decisions on page 83. That's for us to note. Is there anything, Diana, that you'd like to point out to us under this? No, thank Nothing. you, Chair. Just for information. Okay, thank you. So if we can note that and um, the date of the next meeting, the next committee meeting will be held on Tuesday the 17th of August at 2pm. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.